Oh, what is up everybody? Another day, another bike. We got a brand new one sitting right in front of me and let's get into it and talk about it. This is the Jansno X50. This is a thousand dollar e-bike. So I want you guys to keep that price in mind as we kind of go over this bike because you're getting a decent bike, but you're not getting a very high-end bike. I don't really feel like you're getting a super cheap bike, but there is some reasons why this bike is the price that it is. And we're gonna bring you in here with the camera and kind of show you uh, why it makes it $1,000 and who this should be good for. Maybe your kid or someone that's barely getting into electric bikes that wants to get one, but they don't wanna to spend too much money, then this is probably a decent option. But let me bring you in here with the camera and let's go over this bike. All right, so the first thing to talk about is this battery right here. It is a LG 3200 cell battery, 18650s, not the 21700s that company has been moving to. This is a 48 volt system with a 12.8 amp hour battery. So that's why this bike is priced kind of the way it is. Most bike companies have been going up to 20 amp hours. That's kind of like the standard now on most bikes. I will say that it is going to give you distant range, probably about like 30 miles of range from the 615 watt hours that you're going to get out of this thing. And the bike is decently light. Um, I think their website said it was very heavy, but honestly, when I picked this bike up, it's not as heavy as they say it is, or it doesn't feel that heavy. It feels like it's close to probably like 65 or 70 pounds, but take that with a grain of salt because the website says it's more than that. So moving on to the front of the bike, you have a nice big headlight in the front, which we'll test out one of these days at nighttime when we take it to work in a second video. Um, the cool thing is this bike is $1,000 and comes with turn signals. I've never seen a bike come with turn signals at about $1,000. And to see how the headlight and all this kind of stuff looks, you do have a dedicated uh, headlight button right here, and that's how you turn it on. We'll bring you up here in a second to show you all the dials and stuff. And then you got your turn signals, the switches right here. You can see they look pretty nice. I mean, they stick out from the bike. People are definitely going to be able to see this. You also have a brake light, kind of like the Aerial Rider Kepler, that also has turn signals integrated into it. Um, it's not as noticeable as the front, but it's still nice that it has that feature. Okay, so now we're in the back of the bike, and you're going to have a 750-watt hub motor in the back with about, I think it's a peak of 1,000. Um, it does feel pretty good. I kind of took it up and down the street, but I haven't unlocked the power yet. So we're limited to like 15 miles an hour. So if, I mean, if you do order this bike, it does come pretty slow out of the box, but we'll get into showing you how to do that. You do have a license plate um, bracket right here, if you guys can see that. So you can put some type of custom plate if you want. You also have a rear fender, but the only thing I don't like about this rear fender, if you go off roading with this bike, which most of you guys probably will, this thing definitely uh, moves a lot. So I've seen a lot of people that review this bike, they end up taking it off. And if you're gonna notice, we don't even have a front fender on this bike, and that's because it came broken. If you did not see my unboxing video, then you would see that this is completely uh, trashed on the side, and it's also cracked on this side. So we're not gonna be using the front fender, even though I didn't really care to put it on. All right, so now let's kind of talk about this side of the whole bike. So other than your 750 watt motor, you're gonna have a Shimano seven speed right here. You're gonna have a Journey Shimano derailleur. It's kind of on the lower end, but again, we're working with $1,000. You have a huge chain ring in the front, which I'm actually surprised at. So I'm wondering if it's gonna feel like we're ghost pedaling. So I believe this bike goes up to 25 or 27 miles per hour. One of their descriptions said 25 miles an hour. Another thing on their website said 27 miles an hour. So we're just gonna see. And then you have a motor disconnect right here, just in case you ever have to uh, change a flat tire. You have your standard pedals and you have a rear shock right here. I'll bring you in with a camera. So you can see this rear shock. It is a 850 pound rear shock. And I know a lot of you guys like to see some information and close-ups of the bike. So here is the information for the battery. So you can pause it if you want to check that out. All right, so let's go over some of the downsides on this bike before I show you the display and the throttle and all that stuff. One major con I didn't like about this bike during assembly is the fact that this bolt right here is so close to the frame that you cannot get a socket on there. So you have to get an open wrench and you have to turn this a quarter of a turn every single time to get it off. So these are a pain in the ass to put on. The rear ones are perfectly fine. It's just these two right here. And I don't like that they're exposed so you can see them off to the side. I feel like it would have been nice if the seat would have went a little bit lower so you didn't see that. This is also the box for the controller. So, I mean, a little bit of aesthetics, you know, they could have fixed, but it is what it is. 
Another thing too is that the front of the cable management is actually pretty nice. I'm not mad about it, but if you do kind of follow it along, it does kind of come up here in the frame, which is nice. You kind of hides a little bit of it, but when it comes down here, it all comes out the back. It all comes up on the side of the frame on the inside. The good thing is you're not really gonna see it from the side view. But if you own this bike, you're gonna notice that it's not as clean as some of these other bikes with the cable management and the wiring. And then you have this big cable that comes way out here and then loops around for the derailleur. And then one of my other complaints with this bike is so many spacers <laughs> up front. Like how many spacers do they need? Now, I feel like what I would like to do with this bike if I owned it and it was gonna keep it as my daily, I would definitely probably move this down, take the spacers out and then put the spacers on top because then it would give the handlebars a little bit of a lower look and I think it would feel better because right now the bike feels like a chopper. They feel pretty high up when you're sitting on the bike. So now that we're sitting on the bike, this is kind of how it looks like. You have your display over here, you have your headlight button on and off, your turn signals right here, and then you have your dedicated horn button. You have some cheap grips right here. I noticed that they uh, just kind of move, so you might want to replace those. But the display is decent. I mean, it's kind of like every other display you get. Um, it kind of has a glare to it, depending on how you're looking at it. It's not color, it's just black and white. Um, but it does tell you some decent information. And then you kind of come over to this side. This is where you have your shifter right here by Shimano seven speed. And then you have a throttle right here, which is a half throttle. Oh, and keep in mind, you're not gonna have any adjustability on the front suspension at this price range. So you're just gonna be limited to how the bike comes. Also, no hydraulic brakes on either side. They are both cable brakes. But I do like the fact that down here, I didn't mention it earlier, we do have a quick release on the front. So if you do get a flat, it's pretty easy to change it out. Let me close this garage real quick so you guys can get a slight idea of how this headlight looks and the brake lights with the turn signals in the back. All right, so it's complete darkness in here and I'm gonna turn the headlight on. And this is the light output from the headlight. It seems pretty decent for being in a pitch black room right now. And the brake light looks promising as well. If I bring you in here, the brake light is very nice. Now I wanna know if it works with the brake levers. Let's check that out. All right, so let's come in here. And when you do hit the brakes, you do get a little bit of light that comes out of the back. Let me see if I can uh, show you guys a little bit better. So you have this little light right here that lights up. So it's not very noticeable if you ask me. Um, let's see how the turn signals look on here. Yeah, so you have your turn signals exactly like how the aerial rider, and actually some bikes have been coming like that because it's a very cheap option to do. So uh, you have those. All right, so before we go and ride it, let me take this seat off really quick. It's gonna take a while because those nuts that I told you about, they're kind of a pain in the ass. Um, and then I'll show you how to unlock this bike and then we'll get on the way and go ride it. All right, so I got the two front bolts out. I'm not gonna take the seat completely off, but all you need to do is grab this cable right here and disconnect it. Once you disconnect this, this unlocks the bike to full speed. So I wanna see what it does right now. And then once we disconnect it, I wanna see what the display says. All right, so let's go into the highest assist, which I guess is three. It's not five like most bikes and uh, have it lifted up right now. And it shows that we're doing 16 miles an hour. So let me disconnect that plug. All right, still in mode number three, the plug is undone. 35 miles an hour. Dude, we picked up like 19 miles an hour just doing that. Holy crap. Now I'm really curious to see what our top speed is going to be when we're uh, sitting on it. So let's get on the way and go. One thing I will say is that when I set it up on my driveway, we're obviously at a slope. Um, the kickstand is not the best. I mean, it's holding the bike up, but I mean, it just wants to topple over. So like if we have a very windy day and it's on a hill, I don't think it's the best kickstand that they put on this bike. It's very, very tiny. But the cool thing is, is there was tons of kickstands on Amazon that you guys can get and replace. And I just noticed that there's a little bit of damage on this frame right here. Not a lot, but if you guys paid for the bike, you know, you guys might be a little bit disappointed about that. Just something to note. All right, so now that we're at a full battery charge, we need to see what the top speed of this bike is. And uh, I'm noticing that the battery bars on this thing go off the voltage sag and it's already showing two bars, barely, as we're moving. But uh, I will say, it says we're doing 27 miles per hour. 
I don't, and now 28 miles an hour. I don't feel like we're doing 28 miles an hour, 29. I don't know, I feel like it's a little off. I actually really want to pull out my phone and see if that's accurate or not. Let me get my phone. All right, so 27 miles per hour, 28 miles per hour, and the display just hit 29, oh, 30, it just hit 30. I saw 30 for a brief second, but roughly like 29. So let me pull up my phone to see where that's saying. Hey, so that's actually pretty accurate. That says uh, 28 miles per hour just now. So it's maybe off one, maybe one and a half mile per hour. Oh, actually that's surprising. So that is uh, pretty damn accurate. All right. First off, their website says the motor is quiet. Um, obviously it's electric. It's gonna be quieter than gas, but it still has a very loud noise to it in the back. So if you guys are familiar with like the Aerial Rider Kepler, the Aerial Rider Grizzly, uh, the X-Class, bikes like that, um, you definitely hear the motor in the back. Compared to like an Onyx RCR, completely quiet. My Super 73, 72 volt motor, completely quiet. This one definitely makes some noise. So it's not gonna be the most quietest thing on the trail if you're like next to people. There is a 21 amp controller in here. So that's decent for this bike frame and the size and the weight and everything like that. So that's not too bad. It picks up speed decently fine. And what are they doing over here? Took my bike lane, man, he took my bike lane. All right, so let's do a throttle only test up until we hit our top speed of probably 27, 28 miles an hour. One, two, three, go. We're not gonna pedal at all during this test. And we're doing 15, 20, 25, and 28. All right. We could have probably hit 29 miles an hour, which is technically 28. But it's not bad. It's not the slowest bike I've ever been on, but it's not going to uh, wow you or anything like that. It's decent for most folks out there. The ride quality is very comfortable. The only thing I've noticed is when I'm braking, it gets a little unstable in the front. And I honestly think that just has to do with how high these handlebars are with the spacers that they put in here. But other than that, like it's not too bad. All right, let's take it off roading a little bit and come up this little thing. It didn't do too bad going up that. I could feel like it was a little bit struggling. You know, it's only a 750 watt motor. Now we don't have the front fender on this bike because of, you know, it was broken in the box. But honestly, I would rather have a fender broken in the box that you can contact the company and they can send it out. That's a very like cheap part compared to the frame being damaged. Other than the spot that I just saw before we started doing this video review, which was kind of disappointing because you can't fix the frame. You would have to send the whole entire bike back. And most of the time you already put it together or notice it before you even get that far in the build. And it's kind of uh, kind of shitty. But uh, the front fender being damaged, I'm not going to really knock them too much for that. It is disappointing, but I'm pretty sure you can contact the company and get that replaced. But as I'm riding in the dirt, I'm bringing that up because everything's flying at me and uh, hitting me right now without that front fender. So I don't know how much it would do because it really only covers the back. And I was actually going to be kind of worried about the rear fender making noise as we're kind of riding over this stuff. But it's not doing like too bad. I don't even hear any noise from the rear fender. So I'm kind of wrong on my statement that I said earlier about it flapping around. Like it probably doesn't look pleasing as I'm riding, but hey, if it's not making noise, it's not making noise. Now, uh, the way this bike feels off road, it feels a little unstable. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It doesn't feel the most stable on this uh, trail. I don't know if it has to do with how these tires are. Or like we already mentioned, I don't know if it just has to do with these handlebars, the way they're positioned. I feel like if they were like down here, this bike would have felt so much better. And we could still do that. Well, I'm thinking about actually doing that if I take this bike to work. It's just moving all these spacers up, moving the handlebars down and calling it a day and it should be so much better. All right, so it's time for the braking test. We're doing 28 miles per hour. We're gonna go off this little uh, thing right here, right in the middle, one, two, three, go. Ooh, all right. So we didn't stop that bad. If you notice, can you see this line right here? This is actually from the other e-bike that we did the other day. So uh, 
that's actually about the same as the Traxxas Explorer we did a couple days ago. So that's not too bad, especially for not being hydraulic and then being mechanical. Um, I'm not a big fan of mechanical. They just don't feel that good in the hands and they also require a lot more maintenance than hydraulic brakes do. But uh, I'm actually decently impressed by that. So, I mean, I got to give it to them. All right, so now I want to use the pedal assist. I actually haven't been pedaling at all for the last four miles that we did. It still says we have a full battery charge other than when we get on the throttle, it always jumps down. But let's just use the pedals and let's just see how it is. I'll tell you if there's any ghost pedaling, how it is. They didn't feel too bad. This feels just like using the throttle and pedaling surprisingly feels decent on this bike does not feel bad at all i do need to uh change my gear though <laughs> let me go through that actually shifts pretty damn nice i'm not gonna lie i thought you know it was a cheap shifter and everything like that but that's not terrible now there is a very huge delay in the pedal assist though i will say so if i let off you guys can hear the motor it stops i'll do it again Yeah, so there's probably like, it feels like a three second delay. That's a pretty long time if you want to start getting back on the power. So again, let me show you this. Start pedaling now. Motor just kicked in. So if you time that correctly, yeah, that's probably like three seconds right there, like straight out. So this is not the fastest bike if you need to get on the throttle like right away. Let's run over this branch right here. What is this? <laughs> hey oh god let's go now the suspension going this fast and the dirt coming back this way um it does feel a little clunky there's no adjustments at all that you can do to the front so you're kind of limited to how this comes um it's not bottoming out or anything like that i'm kind of decently light i'm 160 pounds it's doing decent for me i feel like if you were um probably like 220 you would still be okay but i feel like if you were at the limit of this bike with just 265 pounds um it might be pushing the suspension and one thing i just want to mention to you guys that i just noticed is this cable needs to be zip tied somewhere right here because what happens is as you brake and do some stuff it sits right here and it keeps rubbing against the tire so you could pull this kind of out a little bit maybe zip tie it I don't have a zip tie right now, but um, that's probably something you have to do if you own this bike. Because that cable should have been routed on the outside, not the inside, so it doesn't hit the tire. Now here's something interesting on this bike. We obviously know pedal assist is super slow and laggy. So I probably wouldn't rely on that too much if you need to hurry up and get out of the way, someone's coming or whatever, you're going across the street and you're trying to beat traffic. Um, the throttle is pretty instant. You guys see that? I'll try to uh, show you guys. You guys can probably hear the motor at the same time I do it. Motor working. Motor's working. That's pretty instant to me. That's probably like half a second delay. So uh, if you guys got to like get out of the way like really quick, stick to the throttle. Do not stick to the pedals. All right, so let's get into the turning part of this bike. It is a fat tire bike, so it's probably not gonna be the easiest. But um, I was actually a little bit wrong when I said that the handlebars are very high. Like I'm still gonna move them down regardless because the stability of the bike feels kind of odd. But turning wise, it's fantastic. It actually turns better than I thought it was gonna turn. I don't really have to put a lot of my body weight into this bike. It's pretty light, I feel like. And uh, no, it's not bad at all. Um, I give it a thumbs up for turning. It's uh, pretty easy actually. And now that we have five miles on this bike, you guys are probably wondering how it feels now. And uh, the seat is actually very comfortable. I'm not having any problems with the seat at all. I actually dig it. It's a very nice, like comfortable riding position other than the handlebars being a little tiny bit too high. But off-roading, I would say it's a little bit more rougher off-roading than just on the street. So, I mean, if you have to go off road, it's doable, but it's not gonna be as comfortable as street riding. Now let's test out this horn. Let's see how this is. Oh, no one is in that car. I was hoping they would hear me. Does anyone hear me? Get out the way. Move, move. 
I mean, it's decently loud. It's not, uh, <laughs> it's not nothing to brag about. It's not like an actual horn. It's just some noise. And I think the reason why it sounds decently loud is because a speaker is right behind that headlight and uh, I can hear it very clear, but I think it's gonna be quieter to the people that are in front of you because the speaker is firing backwards. So it might sound loud, but it's probably a lot quieter than I think it is. So under throttle right now, after six miles, it says we're down to our last battery bar, but that's under like full throttle. It will definitely jump back up to probably like four or five battery bars once I let off, which I'll do right now, let's see. So three battery bars, four battery bars, yup. Yeah, so we've lost an actual battery bar for six miles. So I, I'm not complaining with that. That's okay, if that's like realistic, that's not bad. We got five battery bars to work with, so I'm, I'm cool with that. So since we're towards the end of the video, this is where I give you guys my recommendation, if it's worth it, my rating on the bike, all that kind of stuff. Now the price for what you're getting, I'd probably say this is like a 7.5 or an 8 out of 10 for the price to like what you're actually getting in an e-bike. Um, it's decently worth it. I don't think it's like the best bang for your buck out there, but it's not bad. Now comfortability, I would say that's probably like an 8.5 as well out of 10. It's decently comfortable, especially you're just going to be on the street. There's no problem with it whatsoever. Overall, with the bike, I would probably give it in its price range, probably like a 8.2. I feel like it's really not that bad. It just really depends if you like this style of bike, if you like that it has turn signals, it has a working brake light, a big headlight, you know, it has the shifter on there and, you know, all your buttons to turn all your stuff like on and on, a horn button, and it's at the price range that you're looking at, then I would say 100% go ahead and buy it. And I'll definitely be taking this bike again for another video. So if this is a bike you're interested in, subscribe to the channel because the next video after this is probably most certainly going to be a video of me taking this to work. And we're really going to see how this headlight and brake light work. And I'm really curious. I'm going to bring my charger just in case. But I'm really curious to see if it's going to do a 14 mile trip to my work and back full throttle without pedaling at all. And I, I really want to see if it's going to make it or not. So maybe we'll get stranded. Maybe we'll have to pedal this bike and uh, see how that goes. But I don't think we'll have a problem pedaling this bike because it has a very big chain ring. And honestly, it is not that bad to pedal. But anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Please like these videos and subscribe to the channel. Please, it really helps the algorithm of YouTube. And I'm going to keep pumping out content. You know, I'm going to be honest with you guys and tell you how it is. Peace out. True MVPs, baby. So eight miles down to three battery bars. I'm worried for the next video.